When you want to create construction details, some of the geometry that's required in the detail will be live model geometry, and some of it will be layered on top as view-specific detail elements. So I want to go through the basic process doing a simple construction detail so you can see the basic approach. So I'm starting here in a level one floor plan and I need to create a view of the area that I want to create a detail. So I'm going to do a detail of this prep station and I'll start with a section cut through that area. Now it defaults to a building section, but a detail section will be a little bit more appropriate in this case. So I'll click my first point out here and I'll drag a little to the left horizontally and click again. And with a detail section, you'll get a much smaller crop region than you did with an overall building section. Now I'll click anywhere to deselect that, double click directly on the blue callout tag, and that will open up that detail view. Now there's a few adjustments I need to make here. Notice that the crop region is this generic square shape. We can easily adjust that with these grip controls right here. So I'll stretch that one up so that I can see the top of that low height wall, make these a little bit narrower, and then here at the bottom, I wanna crop out all but the top edge of that floor slab. Now, the next thing I wanna adjust is the scale. If you look down at the bottom of the screen, you can see that the view is currently set to eighth inch equals a foot, which is not really appropriate for a construction detail. So let's click there, the pop-up appears, and I'll choose one and a half inch equals a foot. Now that'll have a pretty dramatic effect on the detail. As you can see, the level head got significantly smaller, the dash pattern that's used for that level line has adjusted, and even the line weights of the geometry in the wall and countertop have adjusted accordingly. Now let's zoom in near the bottom of this wall and begin adding some detail components. So to do that, I'm gonna to go to the Annotate tab and look for the detail component button here. Now there's a drop down, and if you don't see the detail component, just make sure you're choosing that drop down and it's the first item on that list. I'll open the type selector list here and you'll see several detail components are already loaded in this file. And I'll scroll through the list and I'm looking for the light gauge metal channel. I'll choose the three and five eighths inch size and begin placing that here in the model. Detail components do represent real life objects. They're built at the correct size, but they're two dimensional and only show in this view. So when I place this component, we won't see it in any other view elsewhere in the project. Let me tap the space bar one time to rotate it. I'll line it up with the center of the wall and near the bottom and click. I'll zoom out, pan down, zoom in near the top, Tap the space bar twice to rotate 180 degrees, line up again with the center, and then click near the top to place a second component. Let me pan down to the intersection between the wall and the countertop. And then over here on the properties palette, I'll switch components to a light gauge metal stud, three and five eighths inch size. And I'll tap my space bar to rotate it, get it lined up with the middle of the wall and click spacebar one more time and place the next one and click. I'll click my modify tool to cancel and then go to the modify tab and using my align tool, I wanna line both of these up with the top of the countertop. So I'll select the top of the countertop, click the first stud that will move it down, pick the countertop top again, the second stud, and then finally line up the back edge of the horizontal stud with the back edge of the vertical one, and I'll click the Modify tool to cancel. Now I'll zoom back out so I can see the entire wall, go back to the Annotate tab, and begin adding some additional components. Now these components are not already preloaded in the file, so I'll need to use Load Family to bring these in. So I'll go to Load Family, and then go to the Detail Items folder next. This is organized in master spec divisions, but even if you're not familiar with those divisions, don't worry because I'm gonna call them out by the names on the folders instead. So let's go into the finishes folder first, then the plaster and gypsum board, and then finally gypsum board. There's a gypsum wall board and section family here, and I'll load that in by clicking open. This is a two click family. So you're gonna pick two points on screen to draw this piece of drywall. It does have several sizes over here. So I wanna to switch to a 5 8 inch size, and then I will click down near the bottom of the wall at the end point, pull straight up, 
to the end point here, but notice that it's going to the left. So before I click that second point, I'll tap my space bar to flip it the other way and then click that second point. Then I'll move over to this end point at the top on the right, click, pull it straight down. Now this one is oriented correctly, so I'll just click again and place that second piece of drywall. If you zoom in, you will see that those drywall components come in with complete with their stipple hatch pattern representing the drywall and everything. Let's go right to load family and load in another family here. So I'm gonna go up a few steps and then in the wood and plastic folder, I'll go to the millwork folder and choose standard millwork in section. Now this one will display a specified types window and you can choose which size or sizes you want to load in. In this case, I only want one, the one by six, and I'll click OK. I'll zoom and pan near the top of the wall, tap the space bar once to rotate, and then position this wood cap near the top of the wall. Let's focus on the countertop area next and load in our last family. I'll go back a few steps here, go to the furnishings folder, casework next, and then find the countertops. There's a single family in here, and I'll open that up and load it in. Now, this one, I want to line up with the top of the countertop and click, and then I'll click my modify tool to cancel. Now, notice that it's pointing the wrong way. I can flip it easily using the mirror command. So I'm going to go to the mirror draw axis command, and I wanna uncheck the copy feature here on the options bar. When I do that, I can specify my mirror line as any two vertical points, and it will flip the item on itself and not make a copy. If I left that copy box checked, I would end up with a second one and I would have to delete the first. I'll go to the move command, move it to line it up with the wall. And then you can use this grip here to stretch it, but you can also use the align tool, which I find a little bit nicer because it will stretch it for you to the correct length. So that completes our detail components that we've layered on top of our section cut of the live model. And I do wanna stress that all of these components are view specific and only show here in this view. Now you could certainly add more, but I'm gonna move on to the text command now. So here on the quick access toolbar, I'll click the text tool. There are some leader options over here. I wanna choose the two segment leader and then I'll click where I want the arrowhead of my leader to go. So I'm gonna point at this metal stud right here, click where I want the first segment of the leader to go, and then create a small horizontal segment next. Then you just simply begin typing. To finish typing, you click next to the note. That will complete that first note and keep you in the command. Now, to create your next note, you can click your leader line and notice that it will line up with the two points that you clicked on the previous one, and then you can begin typing that next note. And when you're done, it might look something like this. Now, I welcome you to continue adding additional components and other notes, and in fact, if you like, you can even create additional details here in this file.